everyone, this is Matt on the Vinyl Head UK channel. How are we all doing? I hope you are all nice and well. Who fancies a little bit of 80s hard rock? Does that sound good? Let's check it out. This record that I have was one of the first records I purchased when I started collecting vinyl. It's probably one of my, if not my favourite, record by this band. And it arrived with me and I stuck it on. And if I didn't think already that I'd made the right choice with vinyl, I definitely did after hearing how good this record sounded coming through my speakers. Let's have a look at it, all right? We have Pump by Aerosmith. As I say, up there on one of my favorite Aerosmith records. This is such a good record musically. I don't think there's a weak track on there. So, this was released in 1989, but this actually is a 2016 reissue put out by Gethin Records. Um, it's part of the Back to Black series, and it's a nice chunky 180 gram record. You'll get some muscles lifting now. It looks great. It sounds great. Um... So, as I say, yeah, this is a reissue, 2016. Um, let's have a little look, shall we? See what we've got. So, artwork. We always like looking at the artwork. We have the two, what would you call them? Not lorries. These trucks. One on top of each other. We've got Pump written on the door. And one, F-I-N-E, down here. One of the tracks, of course. And then Aerosmith logo at the top. Make of that what you will. And then a very 80s uh, looking picture of the band right there. You couldn't really mistake what era that this record is from. Just looking at that photo of the band right there. Uh, also on the back, so down the side, we have our track listing. Um, who is in the band in quite small right in there. And then the usual... Produ uh, production credits and engineering credits and all of that. So there we go. There is our artwork. Um, looking inside, I have to say, I'm not a big fan of the inner sleeve, if I'm completely honest. Let me show you about it. So uh, there is our artwork. Petrol pump. Uh, we've got pump tattooed on his arm as well. We can see that there. Flipping it over, another very 80s picture of Aerosmith. Um, back then when they were a lot younger. Uh, track listing, once again, at the bottom of the sleeve. And then a uh, thank you list and all the corporate jargon down here. Now, let me show you the record itself first and then I'll talk about why I'm not a fan of this. So, it's very basic. Right there, can you see? It's quite a corporate looking logo. As I say, it's Geffen. So we have the Geffen logo and then side one and then quite a small Aerosmith pump and the track listing. The same is on the flip on side two. As I say, it's quite corporate. Nothing really that stands out on that. but. The reason I don't like this packaging is I do not like this plastic sleeve because I uh, play each record before I do these videos just so jog my memory. I can pick out bits I want to talk about and it's nice and fresh in the memory. So, I, so yeah, just before, before this video I did it, I put it back in and I pulled it out and it's got little bits of debris on little bits of plastic from the sleeve it's not as bad as when i first opened it first time i pulled it out it was covered in all loads of white little specks that have come from the sleeve itself needed a real good clean um the packaging is quite tight it's difficult to get the record out sometimes and obviously if you've got lots of plastic you don't want to run the risk of scratching your record and then you've got pops and crackles and you've you've ruined the product a little bit um, so I'm not the biggest fan of that. I think I might 
try and get a paper sleeve and put it in there and just maybe store the plastic one elsewhere. I don't want to get rid of it. It's obviously part of a record. It's part of the whole package for me and I like that. But yeah, I want to make sure my record is intact. Um, and I think if I keep sliding it out of this, eventually we might get some uh, scratches, which we don't want. That's not cool. Let me pop it back in for now. So, who is Aerosmith? Well, that's Aerosmith. Let me tell you who is in the band. So, um, on vocals, Steve Tyler. Um, on guitar, we have Joe Perry. So, the Toxic Twins, as they were known. Um, for getting up to all sorts of shenanigans. Um, so, Joe Perry on guitar. We also have Brad Whitford. On guitar, on bass, we have Tom Hamilton. Joey Kramer rounds it off on drums. We've been pretty much solid on that lineup throughout the years. I don't think we've really had any lineup changes whatsoever through the years with Aerosmith. So, been pretty solid. I've mentioned in other videos that bands from that era pretty much likely to have a, have a member change or two or well, Aerosmith goes against what I've said they've been solid throughout so that makes up the band and then our track listing so side one let me just point out as well actually before I say the track listing there are some musical interludes um, listed on other listings so um, we have like uh, uh, on the second side at the start, we have this really nice acoustic little interlude which goes into the track. That has a name, but it's not listed on this track listing. So because we're talking about this record and this product, I will go with what the track listing states rather than talking about the names of the interludes. Um, so without further ado, side one, Young Lust, F-I-N-E, fine. Love in, an Love in an Elevator, excuse me. Monkey on my back and Janie's got a gun. Flip it over, second side, we have the other side. My girl, don't get mad, get even. Voodoo Medicine Man and What It Takes. That typical Aerosmith ballad rounding up the record there. As I say, there are interludes. So if you might see online or whatever or other track listings, different tracks listed or not not maybe not different tracks but other things added that is just the small interludes that we get on this record so um this record uh was or is Aerosmith's smith's second biggest selling record it sits behind toys in the attic and this was a follow-up to permanent vacation um, which is another great record in its own right. But the band wanted to get away from kind of a polished sound that they had on Permanent Vacation. They wanted to get it a little bit rawer and edgier. It was very, as I say, polished and sort of arena sounding record. You know what I mean, I'm sure, with that. Um, this record, it's still very glammy. So that glam rock element. Um, but it definitely has more hard rock elements in it. Some reviewers have stated it's metal. I would never go as far as saying Aerosmith were ever a metal band. Hard rock, yes, but not metal. Same as Guns N' Roses. I don't think Guns N' Roses ever fell into metal. I think they were hard rock through and through. The same with Aerosmith. Um, but it does still have that glammy feel to it, definitely, in some of the songs. Um, not all of them, um, but a few of them, you can hear that glam element too. So, as I say, it is probably my favourite Aerosmith record. I don't think there's a weak track. I've talked on other records that I like. There is maybe one or two tracks that not as good for me personally. They don't do it as much for me. This, tr uh, this record... I don't think there's a track I'd want to skip. Not that you should skip tracks on a record. Just listen to it as one. Don't go skipping. Don't go repeating. Just listen to it. That's the whole beauty with a vinyl. You get the full experience of that record. But I wouldn't want to skip anyway. Even if I listen to it on the CD, I don't think I'd want to skip any tracks on it, to be honest. Um, 
Young Lust, F-I-N-E, and Love in an Elevator. The first three tracks on this record are pure hard rock ecstasy for me. Amazing tracks. I love all three. And it just kicks that album off. It gets you in the mood to just want to enjoy yourself. You know, um, you have that, you know, that it doesn't let up introducing you into the album. It's that dun dun, you know, that power chord and the drums and you're straight in. And then that charismatic voice of Steven Tyler, no one sounds like him. No one has the vocal style of him. No one could get away with trying to imitate how Steven Tyler is with his vocal style. You just look stupid. Um, but you're straight in and then you're going, you're coming out of Young Lust and if, and uh, rah, rah, I'm so excited I can't get my words out on this one. You come out of Young Lust and you go into F-I-N-E. And it doesn't let up, as I say. You're into this ballsy rock and roll track. It is pure rock and roll, this one. Um, you know, this is the hard rock element, I think, with Young Lust and F-I-N-E. Um, but still, the glam. The glam comes through a little bit more, I think, with Love in an Elevator. Um, one of my favourite Aerosmith tracks. I'm going to talk about the sound. I really want to talk about Love in an Elevator on the sound. Um, but this is more of a, the glammy side, I think, with Love in an Elevator coming through. Um, it's such a catchy track, though. The riff, the bass, just everything about it is so catchy. Such a simple little drum beat as well. Brilliant track. Um, Monkey on My Back. This is quite an 80s. Yes, OK, it's an 80s record, but quite an 80s sound to it with the chord progression and the production value, it is straight out of the 80s. There's no mistake in that sound. Um, hopefully that makes sense what I'm saying, but you can tell on some records there is purely an 80s sound. A lot of Aussie stuff from the 80s sounds very 80s, which might sound a really stupid, obvious thing to say, but it just has that sound to it, you know? And um, yeah, Monkey On My Back is very 80s. Um, it goes a little bit darker on Janie's Got a Gun. There's different elements musically added in there. Um, it does take a little darker turn from what we've had with that pomp rock, rock and roll, glammy sound. It gets a little darker, which is nice. I don't think, as much as I love those, those opening tracks, it's nice to change it up a little bit and give a different feel coming into to some of the tracks. Um, the Other Side has one of those musical interludes that start really nice acoustic piece. It doesn't last very long, like a minute or so, but it's really nice. Just a cool way to open up that second side. And then we go into The Other Side, literally, um, and it's pomp once again, pomp, glammy, rock and roll. It's got nice horns, so there are other elements on this record with keys. You can hear a horn section playing. That comes through very nicely on the other side. Um, and yeah, we, we go down to the end to what it takes, which is our ballad. We all know about Aerosmith and their ballads. They do love a good rock ballad, power ballad, if you will. And we get that on the end with what it takes. We don't go through a whole Aerosmith record there without slowing the pace down a little bit. We do at the end. Um, I don't know if maybe we could have brought that in onto the second last track and then the album on a hard rock high. But they know what they're doing. The production knows what they're doing. And that rounds off Pump. Now let's talk about how it sounds. As I say, this was one of the early records I got. Um, it was up against some stiff competition with Black Sabbath, their self-titled debut, with sonically how it sounds. But this was pushing it, definitely. And as I say, if I wasn't sure about vinyl or 
jumping on to collecting vinyl with the sound before I definitely was sure after listening to Pump for the first time. I'm going to go straight on to Loving an Elevator. I mentioned it earlier about the sound. I have never been more excited. Okay, I tell a lie. Black Sabbath, a track on the Black Sabbath record, got me excited with the bass. But this one got me excited too with the bass on Love in an Elevator. Um, the bass comes through amazingly on this. But I find with CDs or digitally, if you listen to Apple or Spotify or whatever, um, if you crank up that volume or the bass, it distorts it. It's vibrating, you're distorting everything else, you know. It, it just takes that niceness off a track because you're just listening to a bit of a distorted mess. The bass comes through on this track and it's so pure, such a pure bass sound. You don't distort, you don't vibrate. It just sounds so pure and what a lovely bass tone that Tom Hamilton has, especially on this track. The tone is gorgeous. Um, we have the sort of the vocal line and the guitar riff, and then Tom Hamilton comes in with the da -dun 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 that bass line that follows it, and then he does a couple of slides on the bass as well, mm. and it sounds amazing. I think it would be if I was to upgrade or or you know take this record to a friend of mine that has a record player and tech chest out to check out their system i think loving an elevator off pump would be the track at the moment that i would use to test a different record player out and get a feel for how that record player sounds um just i just can't get over how great that bass sounds it is so so nice those slides, as I say, just sound incredible. And the rest of a record doesn't disappoint sound-wise. It's not like Loving an, Ele Loving an Elevator is an exception. The rest of a record does sound great as well. Um, the horns come through really nice and add that different element onto the Aerosmith sound already. Um, Steven Tyler's vocals, you know, they're coming through so clear. There's a lot going on with his vocals at times doing sort of like almost scat sort of stuff at times. And, you know, he has got a lot going on with his vocals. It's hard to follow. He's very quick with his wording and his phrasing. But it comes through crystal clear and you can pick up every syllable, basically. It doesn't uh, blur in and just sound distorted and, it, you know, not difficult to, to hear, really. So I'm impressed with the sound, really impressed. Um... The whole record sounds really great. It's a nice reissue to pick up. It's not overly expensive. I got it at a good price. Um, obviously, we all know original pressings can be quite expensive at times. But I think this one, this 2016 one, holds its own definitely. So, that is Pump by Aerosmith. What a sound of bass we have on this. I talk about the bass all day long if you let me, but there it is. Go check it out. Really great record of Aerosmiths. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to go and subscribe for plenty more vinyl content. Go and smash that like button as normal. Hit the bell for all notifications for content. And I'll see you all soon. Go and buy vinyl, listen to vinyl, and I'll catch you later.